All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are again. This is Submagician. We're going to go through creating your character. Again, this is based on, for me, is the champion level, which is a 32 point. Uh, I've received enough skill points that I've ever been able to do 32 point characters. So anybody I create now is all 32 point characters. But that's not really an issue. So, spellcasters. Male spellcaster. So we have cleric, source, cleric, wizard, spiritual, druid, and warlock. Uh, right now, I would say the warlock is probably the most powerful of them all at uh, low to mid level simply because of his capabilities of using spells and his warlock. Um, blast that he has so yeah he really stands out a lot of times people are going to be playing the wizard as a rogue wizard because you it's all intelligence based so you pick up two levels of rogue then do a wizard now the reason behind that of course you, you can multitask you can find and remove traps which increases your um or our groups experience points for each quest which is kind of nice to do oh, pardon me. but really when it comes down to it it's just a matter of how you play style uh, i've got a girl i know who plays druids or sorry yeah druids and clerics paladins but not sorks or warlocks or wizards she says you can't play them that's weird. I don't know. So, let's go through a Warlock, because the Warlock is probably the most involved one of this group. Um, you can bang out a, a Sork, Cleric, Wizard, Favors, or a Druid fairly easily. Um, warlock is a little more difficult. First off, uh, there's no custom ones. You, you have to do a custom Warlock. You can't do a regular Warlock. So warlocks are bound with charisma, but <sighs> how do I put this? First, their greatest strength of all humans, they can do whatever they want. To have. Whatever, back. So warlocks are based on charisma for the spell power, but that spell power is for their spells and not the arcane blasts. So the Arcane Blast has more to do with what you choose. We have skill points and action points than on Charisma. So you can actually move some of your points over. So we're going to do a custom one. And it is going to be based on Charisma. So we're going to use that as a basis. So... Lower charisma, no. Shifter, no. Yeah, you're gonna fit the bill, dude. Actually, we're gonna do a female. So, higher charisma to start off with, which means that I can start off with a really high charisma. So, charisma is spell points. How many spell points you have? Uh, definitely dexterity and constitution because they can increase his armor class and hit points. And that's about it, really. So if we go into con, I can do an 18 con 20, and it's all through. But that limits me down to about one skill point each level, and that's not really any good. So we're going to increase that 10. That gives us six points left. So we're going to add some dexterity, because that's your armor class, as I mentioned. With a 20 charisma. Now, the charisma side of it routine, like I said, really adds your spell points. But, is it worth dragging down at six points at this position? So, could I use those six points in some place else to benefit this character more or not? And the answer is basically yes. Six points gives me a higher con. A higher dexterity, a higher strength. So strength allows me to carry more without getting weighted down. 
And I can throw a couple more in here for more skill points, which is always a good thing. So let's go next. So we have 12. Four in concentration, four in spellcraft. Met U M D and double. Now a lot of the other ones I really don't look into simply because they're not necessary. Um, do I want to intimidate them to come over and attack me? Hell no. Jump, I can use a spell for that. Balance, again, you're in the back, you're not in the front, so you're not worried about that too much. Haggle and heal. Uh, it gets me a little more money for what I'm selling, but I've already got a four there. Haggle is a four. Heal is a minus, so I'm going to lose a little bit there for hit points when I go to a shrine. And that's what the definition tells you. So the rest of them really don't come into effect too much at all. Bluff, Intimidate. So we'll leave them alone. So this is where things start to get a little interesting. And what I'm going to do is going to show unavailable. And what I want to show the unavailable for is for a particular skill. And that skill can be found down the list. And it's not clear or anything like that because we don't need that. It's actually a casting on the run. Now, casting on the run allows you to do exactly that. While you're out running around trying to dodge things and they're trying to kill you, you can cast spells while you're dodging like a madman or a woman. Spell focus. Mobile spell casting. There it is. So, mobile spell casting requires combat casting and then level four or level eight or level one whichever ones these meet so in warlock we need level four so we can use mobile spell casting so combat casting first off we're going to look for that and there it is there so there's combat casting. Now the next one we need is what affinity we're going to have. So this is the pact we're going to make with a being of immense power. Now we can choose any of these that are here. It used to be a lot smaller. So we just have to make sure which one we want. So we have Pact Celestial, Fey, Fiend, Great One, the Abyss, and the, the Storm. Cursory storm, whatever. So it's basically a let cold. This is negative damage. This is um, this electricity. Do acid damage. Sorry, fire, sonic, and electrical. There it is. So you have to choose which one. So at low levels, yeah, fire is basically it. But I'm going to go with acid. There we are. So what spells we got? Yeah, not really a good bunch here. Let's go with jump. Now, when you're looking at spells, it's okay. Personal preferences again. Um, I normally take night shield or shield because of two things. One, uh, in this case, it's bonus for resistance for spells, but also protection from magic missiles. And this is shield. Gives you plus four shield bonus armor class. And again, magic missiles. So... Uh, and jump. No, I take jump. So there is our warlock. And now it's just a matter of going through and deciding on how you want to make that person look. Really. More human, more demon, more scary, whatever it is. So again, here it's your cosmetics. I'm not keeping any of these characters I'm making, so it really doesn't make too much of a difference, but it is interesting. Uh, for horns, I normally 
take one of the last ones. This one. Oh, yeah, it's really cool. So we have the jewelry on the end of the horn. Nice horn shape there. Okay. Uh, schnozzles. Okay, we go. Yeah. Uh, skin color preferences. Lip color really doesn't make a difference. It's again how you want the character to look. Miss ASD, neutral good. Uh, I like still taking the good aside of it. Neutral good. If it's available, off of good sometimes. Oh, create. And there is your warlock. And then. One of the things is is that we're going to do a seventh level warlock here because of what I want to show you later on for their abilities. So we're going to give her eight toolbars. We're going to rearrange things in here like we normally do. Um, spells is number six. Yeah, this is number four, and that's number six. Mm -hmm. I can arrange her later on. There we are. The same thing. UI layout. Load. One. Ta da! There we have it. Let's bring up our map. We always have to move the map over there. That's fine. So, let's go up here. Beep. Jump, jump, jump. So we're going to do level 7. Now the reason why I'm doing level 7 here is I'm going to show you uh, some of the options you get a little better on and how to choose your blast, our keen blast that you're going to be using. So don't make a difference. Melee weapons, no. What do I do? Bath. Spellcaster. Foot. Warlock. So we got three points. One, two, three. There we are. Next, let's see. Let's go with the shield. Now, one of the things I don't like doing is taking that shield because of something else that's going to happen with our uh, action points we get. Now, these are going to be one of the things we're going to be doing here. Is we're going to take something that's going to nullify that. So let's let's do that. We're doing warlock, warlock. One, two, three. Next. Let's do it anyways. Let's go shield next. Finish. Spellcaster, warlock. Three action points there. Now the reason why I'm using so many uh, the action points I'm putting in here, let's go back one, is that uh, UMD of course we're going to be using cleric spell uh, scrolls, so it comes really handy for that. Want to make sure to be able to do that. And let's see. What do we want to use through here? Well, what we want to do is we don't care about weapons. Exotic weapon proficiencies don't care. Martial proficiencies don't care because it doesn't apply to us. Martial weapon, no. So let's go in to extend the spell. We want the spells to last longer. That way we can cast them once for a quest and not worry about it. Now, because we're level 4, we get our first advancement ability score, so we can raise 1. Charisma is 8, 18, and those 12, 16, and 14, so Dexterity really don't need to play with that. Con is going to give us a few more hit points. That's not going to be... Actually, that's probably the most important one right here. Charisma is not going to make a difference because we don't consume spell points 
on our arcane blasts. We consume spell points when we cast spells. And if we have extended spells, we don't really need to cast spells that often, which means we can get by with a lower number of spell points. So, let's make us healthy. There's our three action points. Warlock abilities, Thought Shield, plus one save source. Yay! So here, what the spells for second level I like to take is Blur, which is what I'm going to take now, Invisibility, and Suggestion. So we can, we can, again, how do you want to play your character? So if you're more offense based, then you could choose more offensive spells, array of exhaustions, or more protection, such as protection from energy. Next, finish. Let's go to level five. Again, the same idea. One, two, three, next. Relic abilities, knock. So we get the spell knock now, which means we can unlock chests and doors, stuff that's locked. Just gotta find them. I'll go back in again. And this is level six. Now we have two feats here, so we're going to go down. And uh, Anthropic Ward. Plus five magic resistance for 25% fortification. That'll work. Now, so one of the things we can do down here. We scroll down there's our mobile spell casting that's what we want to get and there's mental toughness but we want the mobile spell casting so now we don't have any problem moving around and casting spells love that warlock one two three next and this is our last level we're going to be taking so which one do we take? Displacement, haste, yeah. dimension door. I mean, you could really play around it. One of the things you look at is, oh, can I get scrolls of haste? Yes, okay. I can get scrolls of dimension door. Ooh, a little harder to come by. Uh, stone's gonna get scrolls of that. So, yeah it's not really making that much difference i'm going to bring up my inventory and we're going to disregard all the extra goodies that i got i'm going to look here and doo -doo -doo, jump down here hello minotaurus oh yeah sorry keep forgetting about that now let's go back and talk about action points. Okay. Close. Not gonna do it. <gasps> let's get my equipment first. Give me my stuff. And out. Now because we again we did a character level seven, we're going to get our plus two shocking equipment. You choose whatever you want. It really doesn't make much difference. Um, they do have Staff, there it is. We'll take that, thank you. And we're gonna throw that on. So now we have a staff. And the staff is gonna give us plus two shock starter, so not a big deal. Let's add our equipment here, which is for the most part junk, which we will get rid of later on. And it actually includes armor which is interesting so really able to run around so 112 hit points 364 spell points okay that works now this is where we get the goody stuff so close that off and we're going to bring back our inventory and we're going to use that one action point for our race because it's there so we might as well use it dang thing I 
Hey, man. There we go. Okay, so that goes there. It just goes down here. We're good to go. Yes, we're good to go. Okay. Now we have 25. Okay, so there's that one ratio one. So we're done there. So one of the things you can do, um, I found out playing in the game, is that you can go Tainted Scholar, Soul Eater, or Enlightened Spirit. Now, they really have the different benefits, but it's again how you play style. If you're looking at doing actions with your hands, you can use it so that you use an aura. So instead of using blast, you're going to use an aura around you. And that's right here. You can see here in the oh, there's burst. So that burst out around you. That's nice if you want that to run all the time. But I find that a lot of times those bursts don't work. So if you're in a, a ship, for instance, and you're training, you can turn that on and the burst will work at the first round and down will go your training dummy. When it stands back, you approach them again and the burst don't work. And I find that happens too at the same time with uh, monsters. You jump into a bunch of monsters and your R is not working. So it's like, what the hell? And next thing you know, you're getting the crap beat out of you because your R is not working. And of course, you don't have anything to fall back on, just your R. So, yeah. So, we have two ways to use your blasts. So, your arcing blast you're going to put out can be used in two ways. You can chain it, and the chaining will do is bounce from one to four characters, depending how much is in front of you and how close they are. Or blast a cone, again, depending how much they are in front of you. Some people will say they like the blast because it gets everybody in front of you. Whereas if you use the chain, they say, yeah, anybody running at you, you can hit them further away. And me, I prefer to hit them further away because they're further away, which means they're not hitting me. I don't have to get them within 20 feet. I can hit them 40, 50 feet away. So I'm going to go Taint the Scholar, because the one I want to use is right here. So I need enough points. i got to spend five points in the tree to do this. So that is my first one, Taint the Scholar. This one here is also, uh, we, as it states, activate for 10 depravity and 25 of universal spell power, plus the bonus to all DCs, last 20 seconds, 30 second cooldown. What this does is allows me to give me more spell power don't mind that at all. Spell power what it's all about in your blast. There's 90 more spell points. Wow. That's a jump, isn't it? So, Arcane Blast. So, Arcane Damage, or Pack Damage, Eldritch Blast is here, 1 to 4. Every time I do one of these, it adds an extra dice of damage. Now, the reason why I like doing that is because this drops 1 dice of damage. While well, active, you have minus one Eldritch Black damage die. So by adding two more, then I've actually got, still added one. So it still benefits me. And then we're going to add another one. Now this is a staunch. And basically what it's going to do is temporary hit points. It says 50% to your maximum hit points, which is great. So I can boost my hit points back up. Got to love that idea. So what else can we use in here? Well, let's take a look. Again, I like the ones that I don't have to play with because I'm a lazy smirk. Spellcraft, plus three spellcraft. Uh, Eldritch Blast base damage is now evil instead of force. Okay. What else we get here? Faltering is a 10% just a slow enemy and penetrating. Uh, one specs oh, gives me blast damage, but it's going to cost me two, four, six points in that. So I got to think about that one. Uh, this is nice. When you cast spells on yourself or allies, you grant temporary hit points. You go to 33% of your charisma for three minutes. One action point. Now I can add another one. When you cast spells, it's 66, so I can actually do 100%. 
Temporary hit point equal to 100% of your charisma. The higher your charisma, the more hit points you're going to get. So that is a nice bonus. Heightened magic magic spell. Cost you one fluor spell points. So if you have the heightened. Now if we go back into our, our feats. We have extend. We don't have heightened. So that doesn't make any difference. Does it? So we can add charisma. That's spell point. Doesn't really do anything in here, does it? So let's take that out. Let's add something. Spellcraft, which is damage. That gives us three plus three spellcraft plus three concentration. So that's a nice bonus. And now we have these lit. So we have our last pack damage there. Yay! And we're done. So really, when you're looking at this here, that'll do it. So there we have our, we have two points left. So 22 in there. And it doesn't do confusion. Yeah, just a spell. Anything else we can do? Let's accept that. And then we're going to throw a point in here and add a point in here. So the reason why I have this plus one hit and the universal spell bar and here it's going to give me more hit points. And I'm going to add to that slowly later on. So that I can get more spell points in here, Zip, which is 100. So, it's really going to add into that. One of the things you can do is you can add this Fade Arc Illusionist and your Inquisitive. The Fade Arc Illusionist allows you to have your pet, and there's a lot of points in there you can get. So, there we have it. So, let's bring up our enhancements. So, we have all your passives down here, which are cool. And then your tainted spellcasting goes here, your staunch goes here, and your eldritch blast shaped chain go here. Now we're going to add this in place. So our social, our compendium, and our quest journals. Because it's just nice knowing to have that information available to you. Options UI. I want to move one thing over. Need this one here. We're gonna move it right over there where it belongs. Thank you very much. There we have it. So let's go in spells. There's a spell. So we have four, eight, nine spells. So non-action point spells. I have a tendency to put them on a different one, such as your dimension door. These ones here are not what you would call damaging spells this one's okay because it belongs there so when you look at it he doesn't have any damaging spells it's just informational and protection type of spells no damage spells at all sorry don't have them there enhancements are done do we will need anything else here these are all automatic love that thank you spell casting we have magical training mobile spell casting thank you very much nope nope extended spell yes thank you we're going to activate our pack there thank you trip and center he's not strong enough to do that uh defensive fighting <laughs> nope not going to be able to do that automatic combat we'll leave there and ratio action points so there we have it. So let's activate here. There we go. Nicely done, girl. And of course, you can't see that here because you're not allowed to use your arcane or eldritch blasts in the marketplace. So fine, don't care. Don't have haste and we do have a separate little character to help us and if we expand some of these now it will add to that and just gonna wait until that one goes so we have a fifth level thank you we're gonna lock that down put that up there 
Sure, that's good. That's an extra five hit points. There it is. Thank you. These are tomes that we get, which are plus two to plus three. This plus two is the most <sighs> offside one, so balance plus two. Here, close that down. All right, plus three, we're going to go concentration, of course, and spell power. Spell crap. All right, we're going to add those. Every point works. Now some people turn, well, I don't really worry about that, but no. Each one of those points really does make a big difference. You sit there and sit there and say, okay, I don't need these three here and two here. Well, that's five, but how many times are you going to use your arcane blast? Well, every guy that comes at you, you're going to fire two or three blasts or five or six at them. The more you use it, the more it's going to make a difference. So there we go. Now, when that comes back down as you go here. Spellcraft is now up to 17. Concentration 24, so that's really nice to have. So, let's go in again. Yes, you can see the faint traces of that staff that we have that we... Uh, silly. But whatever. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, so I'm going to go in here and do this quest because I want to show people what he actually can do. Power chambers. Okay. So we have your spells. Protect her a little bit. Okay, we're good. As you make your way into the sewer, you are assailed by rank smells. The slick floor is equally foul. That's interesting. I didn't think the sound was that high. Oh, what do you want? Go away. Thank you. Go burn down. Let's go here. Options. Audio. Combat sound is high enough. Sound effects is fine. It's ambient sound. Now these are all got up high. Why are they that high? Interface, sensing weapons, master volume. So let's try that. See if that works out. Okay, so. Two crystals, dull and lifeless, flank the gate. There must be a mechanism to activate them within the tunnels. Yes, there is, but I'm not going to worry about it. Now you see how effective that is. Thank you. I see you. Go. Okay. The nice thing is that when you're watching it, you can see it bend around the corner and kill him, for instance. Which is really Along helpful. The and walls of the sewer, you find signs of the so it's not going to, gonna, not only going to kill him, but it's going to go kill anybody that it could actually bounce to. Even if they sneak up behind you. <laughs> so you got to love it. It just works so well. There's a lever okay. here. Throw the switch. Perhaps it is tied to the crystals that power the gate. And every four people that it's hitting. All dead, thank you. The bodies of missing adventures. The floor in the lever. So if I want to use the shrine, I can. Don't really care. So now let's just back out because we've cleared this side. Not hurt me because you can't. Down the side, and this is where we get the electrical ones, but the same kind of idea here. Anybody we meet, just blast him away, and he's gonna tag on to other people and kill them. Uh, 
That's the dorm. The bodies of some of the missing adventurers. <laughs> There is a lever here. Perhaps it is tied to the crystals that power the gate. So let's boost our hit point count up, an extra 61. So in case we get caught in this. Missed that one, thank you. Missed that one, thank you. No, missed me again. So we come up here and we're gonna complete the quest. I'm killing these two bozos. I'm gonna increase our spell power. All about you. Makes it easier to deal with this guy. Hey, you don't run through there. You don't stop around. Return to the woman and tell her what you have learned. Done. Quest complete. Thank you. That easy. So that's the nice thing when you're using your uh, chain is that it will bounce around corners and allows you to hit guys that you normally can't hit and you don't even see. So when you make a warlock and you start getting up to levels, pick up that chain one because it's really, really handy. And if they're coming at you, it's great. You can use a cone that way there and kill them all. But it, when you can't see them in, or they're around corners, to be able to have that chain one bounce around corners to kill them is really cool. It just works really well. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. There's my take on your Warlock, updated for 2021. I hope everybody stays healthy and safe, and we'll see you next time.